this first epistle of John, chapter 2, and verse 18, my message, many antichrists, many antichrists, little children, it is a last time, and as we have heard that antichrist shall come, even now are there many antichrists whereby we know that it is the last time. There are many antichrists whereby we know it is the last time. Now the spirit of antichrist is a spirit of deception. And not anybody in this audience wouldn't agree with that. It is a spirit of deception. Wherever you find in religious circles a deceptive spirit, you have found the Antichrist. Now the Bible said God hates every false way. And it always shows up in a distortion of the things of God, a spirit of deception. Now that Antichrist spirit can only gain ground as it deceives people. There's no other inroads, no other way only through the spirit of deception and once it is uncovered for what it is in any group of people its power has been broken except on those that are very naive once it has been exposed you have broken the power because it has to operate in the darkness Paul speaks of it like this the mystery of iniquity he said was working already now the word mystery means something that is covered, something that works in the dark. And Paul said that spirit was working in his time. That spirit of deception, and you must know that he's talking about the church. That that spirit of deception had found its way into that church birth at Pentecost. Jude, 30 years after Pentecost, is praying for the faith once delivered to the saints. Something has happened. That spirit of Antichrist has invaded the ranks of that church birth on the day of Pentecost. Now this mystery of iniquity is, is that which masquerades under religion. That's why, that's why that it's called a mystery. A deceptive thing. Now when looking when you and I here this morning, especially you in this audience and those in television audience that know God in his fullness and his blessing, when looking at the religious of, religions of the world, we take a look at most of them, as far as we are concerned, are anti-Christian. Most of the religions of the world, I'm talking about religions, many of them don't even profess the thought of Christian. But they profess the thought of knowing God. And when we look at them, when we look at them, we look at them as being anti-Christian. Yet, you and I must admit that in these religions, the people there are as sincere as you and I are. Those people caught up in this anti-Christian religious system are as sincere as we are, it's sad to have to say this, but many of the adherents of these anti-Christian religions are more deeply settled in their doctrines than most of us are. Is that right? It's sad to have to say that, but it's the truth under God. It's a hard thing to jolt a Jehovah Witness out of that thing that he's got himself caught in. He's caught up into those doctrines. It isn't just a mere Sunday adherence. It isn't just something that he, that, he, that he wonders about. He has looked it over, and from his standpoint, he's come to believe it. Now, why is this so among them? I'll tell you why. It's because the spirit of Antichrist has captured them completely. They've been caught in this deceptive spirit, and it has caught them completely. They are absolutely caught in it. The Antichrist that they worship exactly answers to their ideas of Christ in God. Now I want you to hold on to that. It's important that you hear. 
We move toward the end of this age and Jesus said, if it were possible, the very elect of God could be deceived. It is imperative that I know and you know what's taking place in our time. Now, now listen to it again. The Antichrist that these people worship totally, absolutely, is exactly answers to their ideas of the true Christ. Their prophets and their teachers must correspond to their ideas of religion. They would not tolerate them a moment without that. Isn't that right? They would not tolerate them a moment. There are many antichrists among them, but only those antichrists that conform to their idea of religion has any influence over them at all. Now when you move from just the religions of the world to the Christian religion, there are two main branches of it that is espoused by the world. There is a Catholic and the Protestant. These are the two main branches of, of so-called Christian religion. Whether it's Christian or not doesn't matter. That's where it's caught up and called in the terminology of the world. Now we would look at the Catholic religion and immediately say that know the Bible, read the Bible, that a great part of it isn't Bible based. There's no place in here in this book that Mary is co-redemptive with Christ. The transubstantiation is not a part of this Bible. The baptism of babies and them being born again is not a part of it. I'm not saying this as to be anti-anything. I'm just saying that if we look at it from the Bible, then we would have to put them at once a great part of what they believe as not a biblical religion. But for an antichrist to appeal to the Catholic, he must be a Catholic. Are you hearing me? I said for an antichrist to appeal to a Catholic, he must be a Catholic. Take the branches of the Protestant church, and we term many of them anti-Christian. They deny the virgin birth. They totally deny the blood. They deny the coming of the Lord. They deny the Pentecostal blessing. There is a denial in them of the fundamental basics. I'm talking about many of them, not all of them. We look at those and we'd say that that's not Christian. Yet for an Antichrist to exercise much influence over a Protestant, he must at least be a Protestant, and most of the time he'd have to be a part of his own organization. He'd have to be a part of his own organization. In other words, no Antichrist can persuade or lead us unless that Antichrist is of the same belief that you are. Unless he professes what you profess. I can tell you, there's no Pentecostal Antichrist can disturb a Baptist church. And no Baptist Antichrist can disturb a Pentecostal church. For an Antichrist to come in this church and disturb this church he must believe and profess what we believe and profess don't you go down on me I'm telling you something this morning you're going to face something before this thing's over ladies and gentlemen you and I that are going to make it we're going to face up to some situations amen everything out there that goes under the guise of religion everything that has a glossolalia and everything that claims miracles isn't God Amen. I'm going to talk to you about an antichrist. Many of them, John said, have already gone into this world. A Baptist antichrist couldn't do much with a Methodist. Amen. The antichrist that deceives us must be our idea of a true Baptist, a true Methodist, or a true Pentecostal, whichever that the case may be. He has to be that. Now, this is not to say that that's all antichrist. No, sir. There's many Christians among all of us. I'm just saying that Antichrist has made an inroad into the most spiritually. He made it into the first church. He made it into one that's born at Pentecost. Before John died, he's saying that there's a lot of Antichrist already invaded, already got there. The spirit of deception had already got there. Now he, he there agrees whenever he comes in, Whatever it comes in, whether it's into this church 
a Baptist church, a Methodist church, whatever he comes into, then he there agrees to all their doctrines and appears to be a true Baptist, Methodist, Pentecostal as to whatever the case may be. Now let us not suppose, ladies and gentlemen, that we are immune to this deceptive spirit. It can evade, invade, rather, our ranks. It has invaded the Pentecostal world in this darkened hour. It can, it will not invade us under the same profession that it invaded others. I'm going to say something about this in a moment, but I must implant this in your mind. Amen. You, you're not going around. I remember I was in Arlington, Texas when the Baptists met, and they were split down the middle as to whether the Bible was a total word of God or not. Some of them were saying it contained the word, others saying that this is the word verbally inspired. But somebody had come into the ranks of the Southern Baptist Church and sold a great part of them on the idea that there may be some error in this Bible. I can tell you, ladies and gentlemen, it wasn't an assembly of God preacher that sold them that lie. Amen. Amen. No, sir. It is a Southern Baptist. And when he sold him, he was an Antichrist. Amen. Don't make any difference how we want to look at it. Amen. When that spirit comes to deceive, then that spirit is Antichrist. Amen. Don't, don't sit around looking for somebody to come along with a Brandon iron, ladies and gentlemen. That awesome spirit has been along the pike and through the ages to capture men's minds and he'll put a brand on nobody that he hasn't captured before the brand ever gets here. Amen. You hear me? He'll never put a brand on one human being that he hasn't captured before the brand gets here. Amen. It must be, it must come to us, that spirit, professing everything that we believe. It will come professing. It must come with power to deceive. Not power to deceive others, but power to deceive us. Amen. And no use in going out here and, pro, pro, uh, and, and acting like you're performing miracles to people that don't believe in miracles. Amen. You're not going to hook anybody on that kind of a, uh, phony signs unless the people believe in it. We are people believe in a God that's the same yesterday, today, and forever. We believe that. Is that right? We believe that God never changes. And the man, the Antichrist that would deceive us would come, Paul said, John said, with lying signs and wonders. He had come with this kind of a situation. Any spirit of religion will we'll re we'll reject a man whose spirit does not conform to their ideas of religion. I have no time for anybody that doesn't believe what I believe about Christ, the Bible, the Holy Ghost, and the things that I've come to believe. And Antichrist can do nothing with us until he can conform to our spirit and our ways. Listen, every de deviation from the Bible base in the Pentecostal church, and this is what's frightening, every, every deviation from the Bible base in the Pentecostal church has come into its ranks by a Pentecostal man. It has come by those that we believe to be a part of us. They talk like we talk. They acted like we act. They profess what we profess or they would never have got through our doors. They never would have sold us what has come to be among us a lie. Listen, this is usually when it happens, a man who has truly had a Pentecostal experience, but somehow has lost it in his worldly ambition and his, and his desire for things and other ambition. He has lost that experience. Amen. But though he lost the spirit, he retained the knowledge of how that spirit works. This is a great tragedy of the 20th century. Men that walk with God in a path of light and saw how the Holy Ghost works. That's the reason men, men were there. They saw that to be filled with the Holy Ghost why 
us to walk uprightly, to do right. So men poured a little mold and tried to shuffle everybody into that mold. If they could get you to grow your hair right and wear the kind of clothes they wanted you to wear, then they said you were a Christian. But the inside may be as rotten as hell itself. Amen. Just on the outside, they observed that when people were filled with the Holy Ghost, they spoke with other tongues as the Spirit of God gave the utterance. So here comes somebody and teaches people how to do a deceptive spirit. They, rem they remove it from the, from the sovereign work of the Holy Ghost and the God of heaven to the volitional use of a human being. That's Antichrist. It is a spirit of deception to make men believe they've received an experience from God when all they've done is mimic what man had to say. This is usually the way. Such men have the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. But after he's gone, they manipulate their powers in such a way as they appear to still possess that power. Still possess that power. Usually it's turning the attention unto themselves. Listen, usually the, the glory is going to be raised upon a man. Amen. It's going to be turned upon a man. Such men, they've had it. Now we're having exposed in the rags of Pentecost all over this nation, maybe around the world. You hear me? We're having exposed men that have been whoremongers for years. Amen. But yet they stand in the pulpit and manifest the gifts of God. Amen. Could weep and carry on and discern what's wrong with everybody else. Yet they've left the pulpit of God after standing in that holy place and go to bed with somebody that's not their wife. Let me tell you, that's Antichrist. They're trying to tell me today that a sympathy. I know men fall. I know women fall. I know there's mistakes made. But when they do, if it is there and there's repentance, they come. You don't have to track them down. They come to repent. And if they repent, there's immediate forgiveness from the Father. There, there is a mark left on life for immorality, but there's immediate forgiveness. And there must be a forgiveness of the church itself. But when you discover and dig it out, and it's been going on for years, and they carry on with a manifestation of the Holy Ghost, you're dealing with an antichrist spirit. You're dealing with a spirit that would destroy everything that is wholesome and everything that's worthwhile. Amen. By their volitional use of these gifts, by the fleshly manifestation of these gifts of God, they've deceived the simple. They've deceived the simple. But let me tell you something. God would have us to know. You know, one of the greatest truths of this Bible is the Trinity of God. Let me tell you something. You, you make a schizophrenic out of God and you got trouble. Never major apostasy in history has come by tampering with the Godhead. One of the greatest truths is to know that the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, amen, are all three equally God, amen. I don't understand all I know about the Godhead, but I do know that the Holy Ghost issues out from the Father and out from the Son. You hear me? The Holy Ghost issues out of the Son. Therefore, the Holy Spirit coming from the Son, a manifestation of that Holy Spirit, is always a manifestation of Christ. Now you ain't going to deceive me if I know that. And they ain't going to deceive you if you know that. That that Holy Spirit issues from Christ. And because it issues from Christ, it is always a manifestation of Christ himself. If you read these Gospels and you see how that Christ was, He walked this earth, He was the church, He's still the church. I'm not the church, you're not the church, Christ in us is the church. And when God's Spirit manifests Himself through that church, then the world sees Christ. Gotta holler loud to keep you awake. 
when, when, when that manifestation comes out, it's Christ. I read the Gospels, and I see how Christ was. I see those manifestations. Whatever happens in this church, if we have the courage to lay it alongside as to what Christ was, amen. Amen. I see a lot of things they say as the Holy Spirit told me. Amen. But you trace that back into the Bible. It has no roots in this word. It's no manifestation of Christ. Then it must be rejected thumbs down. It doesn't matter. Amen. The Bible said he's going to come with all lying signs and wonders. He's going to come with all power, the Bible says, to deceive. And because we people, Pentecostal people, are miracle conscious and so we should be. We believe that Christ is the same, that healing is as much a part of the life of the church today or should be as it was yesterday. The Holy Ghost is a living thing in the church. Christ is alive. We are saved, filled, walk with God. We believe in miracles. And so he comes with his miracles. He comes with his miracles. The Antichrist spirit comes with claims that cannot be substantiated by the Word of God. Oh, brother, I've watched, I've watched miracle oils. And I've watched magic pocketbooks. I've, I've watched horns of plenty. I'm telling you that here, there ain't no such a thing in this book. I said, there ain't no such a thing in this book. There's been folks give their hard-earned money onto some kind of a deal. Listen, there's one place that this thing rests that's in Christ. That Holy Ghost points to Christ. That Holy Ghost points to Jesus, to the Word of God. Amen. It isn't horns of plenty. It isn't magic oil. It isn't a certain shape of a prayer cloth. I believe that those things in the Bible you find in the 19th chapter of the book of Acts, Paul sent out claws taken from his body and the wind is the same thing as his hands on them. Amen. And I, we used to send out, uh, you know, people would write in. Then we got very, very cautious about how we wrote and sent them. One lady wrote me. She had accidentally left it in her clothes and washed it. Wanted to know she is going to be cursed. I fell down and wept. I said, my God, they made a fetish out of it. Let me tell you something, folks. The church must be careful. Only Christ is to be looked to. I said, only Christ. Not a preacher, not a prayer cloth, not a bottle of oil. Christ Jesus, the Lord. Whatever turns that attention away from him is an antichrist. Do you hear me? Whatever comes to take his place is an antichrist. I can tell you this kingdom now thing, that men are saying we're going to bring in the kingdom, then we're going to let God come and rule. This Bible says Christ is going to put down every enemy when he comes back with his church. He's going to destroy him with the brightness of his coming. No, no, ladies and gentlemen, you're not going to put the devil out of business. He's going to put the devil out of business. And any man, any man, any church, any people that say they're going to have took the place of Christ, they're of Christ <laughs> there's one thing this book is jealous over it's Christ I said there's one thing it's jealous over it's Jesus amen oh listen this 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 manifestation must be Christ he he seems to possess every quality of a baptized believer and is thus he works with all deceivableness amen when he comes he seems to possess it all. Amen. He projects himself. He comes. No other Antichrist could appeal to the Pentecostal church. No other Antichrist. But that one that does possess all seemingly, all the qualities and all the outward manifestations, it all must be, be there. Amen. Listen, you see how, listen to them, you see how that many Antichrists 
touch every class of people on the face of this earth. Do you see why that every government on this earth is in trouble? Do you see why every circle of religion is in trouble? I'm telling you the problem John said many antichrists have gone out in this great land of ours. It's not the land I grew up in. Ladies and gentlemen, it can throw the Bible out and endorse pornography. We have a reprobate mind at loose in this great land of ours. Amen. There's a reprobate mind that would protect the criminal. A man up, up in New York had a little shop trying to make an honest living. The thieves broke into it 11 times in one week. Amen. He put up a trap and a fella broke through his roof and electrocuted himself trying to rob the store. Now they want to lock the man up that owned the store. Man and man up in Colorado woke up one night and a man coming down his hall with a baseball bat. The father didn't know that he'd killed both of his children with that bat already. Now making his way to his bedroom, he, he got his pistol, shot him and killed him and they had a long trial. Amen. They said that he had to have, you had to use equal weapons. Equal weapons. In other words, they're saying you have to tell him, hold it in the hall while I get me a baseball bat. And they, they're saying you didn't know that he had already killed your children. How do you know what he's there for? Well, I can tell you one thing. You come breaking down my hall at 2 o'clock in the morning. I ain't going to ask you what you're there for. Amen. I'm saying... There's many antichrists and have evaded every circle. No wonder the whole earth, they're in every government, every circle of religion, and in many systems of religion, it's in complete control. Amen. Complete control. Total control. Finds its way into the assemblies of the most spiritual people on this earth. Yes, sir. Not plague. I can tell you, we evaded him. We never let him touch us. We walked with God. We were ridiculed, pushed on the other side of the tracks. We were hated by religion and otherwise. I'm talking about the Pentecostal church, just like that early church. It was hated by everything along the pike. Until that time that they come in us, that antichrist spirit that talked in tongues like we talked and began to tell us we didn't have to live like we was living, that God didn't really care how you lived. It is just being full of the Holy Ghost, talking in tongues and working some kind of a miracle. And so the whole thing was repeated. It was in Corinth. There become a quest for Pentecostal charismatics instead of Christian character. And when that happened, everything became lost. I said everything became lost lost. God has never in history been searching for Pentecostal charismatics. He has all the gifts. Paul said they're resident in the Holy Ghost. Every last one of them. That's God. All the gifts of God. God's got them all. He's never been in a quest for gifts. He's been in quest for Christian character that they can flow through and make Christ real. Finally, listen, how are you and I to locate him? How are we to recognize him? How are we to know? First of all, first of all, we must keep close to Jesus ourselves. Oh, hallelujah. I said hallelujah. We must keep close to Jesus. Oh, I can't say that too much, folks. Listen. There's no way into that realm of things except through Christ. There's no way to be kept except but Christ. We must learn. We must keep close to Christ all the time. Oh, we, we listen. We must, we must keep close to Christ. We must not allow ourselves to be attracted by human forces. Oh, God, if he had helped me to say that in a language. I saw people deceived by personalities. Amen. This coming along. God spoke. God said. God said. I'm telling you, when he said God spoke, then that needs to be laid alongside this book. Amen. If he said something that doesn't fit in this book, then we better oust it. We better get rid of it. Amen. When we begin to leave the base of this Bible, we are lost. We 
must not be attracted by human forces, human psychology, humanism. I said here last Sunday morning, we've allowed psychology to enter our pulpit. As a result, we've made sin a human weakness instead of a transgression of the law of God. That's the greatest tragedy that happened to the church. Now, you don't have to do anything but read the Old Testament story and find out how much God sympathizes with people and their immorality. None, brother. He had them stoned to death. A man said to me, that's the Old Testament. And I said to him, the same God of the Old Testament is the God of the New. Don't you make that one a criminal in the Old Testament. See, we, we've allowed and been attracted by human forces instead of Christ. Whatever Christ says, that's all that matters. I said that's all that matters. Whether the government agrees with us or not, it doesn't matter. Whether the organization agrees, it doesn't matter. Whether the bishop agrees, it doesn't matter. If Christ agrees with us, you can't look back through history without seeing how much we're affected by history itself. And the problem is, men are always changing how they read history. And, and so interpretive history is one of the great fallacies of our time. I look at the Church of God, the Assemblies of God. They're the two largest of the Pentecostal organizations. The Church of God with this Episcopal government tells me they mainly come stem rooted from the Methodist Church. They were the old holiness church that sprung up out of the Methodists. The Assemblies of God with their congregational government tells you their background is Baptist. We're influenced by history. It's no leadership of the Holy Ghost that one has this and one has that as far as government. It's just where they come from. I said it's where they come from. And you can see the attraction of human forces that has took a hold of it but we must not be attracted by human forces we must walk close to Christ and listen we must let the drawing power of the cross keep us uplifted above the curse of this world church listen to me we must allow the drawing power of that cross to keep us lifted above the curse of this world read the bible spend much time in prayer let nothing take our attention but jesus did you hear me i said read the bible spend a lot of time in prayer don't let anything catch your attention but jesus listen if we'll do that if we will by employing this in our thoughts We'll be given discernment, and God will help us to, to, to determine what is false and what is true. I'm glad to tell you that we're not a victim of circumstances. We only become that when we walk out of the circle of Christ, when we allow personalities to affect us, no matter how big, how little. We're all a part of the body of Christ. Man never gets big enough to circumvent the Word of God, and God's sympathy never overrides that Word, ladies and gentlemen. I must spend time in the Word of God. I must spend time in prayer. I must wait before God. Then I'll discern what's right, what's wrong, what's false, what's true, what's God, what's the devil. This, this, many antichrists. As God began to talk to me, and I saw how this deceptive spirit has come. Man, all the manifestations knew exactly how he worked. Knew exactly how he worked. And with that, began to lead us into pass. They weren't all together, the Word of God. Every era, every era, this deceived has run so parallel to truth that only, only the discriminating are able to tell. Amen. That's the reason I'm telling you, church. Stay close to Jesus. Keep your family close to Jesus. If you don't have an altar in that home, put an altar in that home. 
I said, put an altar in that home. Husband, read to your wife. Pray with your children. Let them hear you call their name to God. Stay close to Christ. Stay close to Christ. Read this book privately. Read it to your family. Pray over your children. Walk with God on the job, off the job, everywhere. Amen. Stay close. There's many antichrists, and every human on the face of this earth is, is every system, rather, is being affected by it. I don't care what church it is. It's there, ladies and gentlemen. And it's there to destroy it's there to destroy. Church, and you and this television audience, you must be born of God. You must be filled with God. And you must learn to walk with God. The leadership of the Holy Spirit. And there must be a boldness about us that it doesn't matter who says it. I have ever right to question what's being said. I have every right. It doesn't matter how big the ministry, how many people hear it, how much money comes in. I have every right to test what's said to me by this book. And if it don't fit this book, I have every right to reject it. On those grounds, on those grounds alone, I want you to bow your head. Our Father, I thank Thee this morning. I thank Thee this morning for this people and this television audience, these that are here immediately. In the jail, Lord, they're listening to me. The nursing home, the hospital. In homes, every walk of life they've heard, Holy Spirit, touch that life. Touch that life. Let us examine ourselves as to whether or not we be in the faith. If Christ is not in us, we are reprobate, though we may be the most religious people in the community. If Christ isn't there, we're lost. Father, speak in this audience all across this triplex. Talk to those that listen. Make them realize the need of being in a real Bible church where without fear or favor the word of the Lord is proclaimed. God save every one of them in the name of Jesus. This television audience, <clears throat> this immediate audience, if you don't know Christ, then you better know Him. And if you've been born of God, then you best be filled with the Holy Spirit. And if you've been filled with the Holy Spirit, then you must, under God, learn the leadership of that blessed Spirit. There's many antichrist. There's a spirit of deception. And your home, your family, your business is not immune. Your church. Turn to Christ. Father, in the name of Jesus, touch everyone in this television audience. Don't let a man or woman go to hell that hurt us tonight. Don't let them be deceived. Good night.